Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another video. I bought five cars. I, I bought a lot of cars last week. They all got delivered last night. Clearly it's a new day. I didn't record anything, but I did take one vehicle home with me. And it's this very, very yellow, obnoxious F350 6.0 Power Stroke. It runs and drives pretty great. I didn't really notice any issues on my you know, 10 mile drive home from the lot last night. Uh, tires are nearly brand new, has a lift kit, I mean it looks good, has a leather interior. I think the mileage is 167 or so. Um, you know, clearly it'll need to get detailed, but pretty solid, pretty clean truck. Otherwise, the truck is wired for a sub. It does have a sub, I don't know if it has an amp. Um, it's not connected, so I'm assuming maybe they pulled the amp out, kept it before trading it in. Maybe I'll mess with it kind of off video, see if I could hook it up, get some bass through the audio speakers. But aside from that, I mean, it's a pretty solid truck. Came with some garbage in the back, so I'm gonna clean that up, and then we're gonna head out to the lot where I'll show you guys the other stuff that I purchased. None of them are kind of this cool, but two of them have known issues, and one of them has a major issue. I have been in arbitration with Mannheim about those two vehicles because their new policy states that if you have a condition report, they are standing behind the condition report, which is a load of garbage. They're saying, oh, you bought them less than $3,000, so they're sold as is, even with a condition report. But I looked at the fine print. If it has a condition report, Mannheim is standing behind it. So what the heck? Like, I am really pissed off and I'm really annoyed because it's thousands of dollars on the line. And like literally that's why I bid on those cars because they had a condition report and they showed no mechanical issues. I get the cars and what do we have? Mechanical issues. Anyways, um, yeah, I'm gonna clean it up. I'm gonna start the truck, let it run for a little bit. And then we're gonna head to the lot and show you guys what, what else I bought. A little longer than a few minutes later. I have made it to the lot now. Pretty sure this truck needs a new serpentine belt. But aside from that, I mean, it seems like strong runner. Plus it looks pretty darn good. This thing is massive. Now let's walk you guys through the other four that I bought. So here's the first one, which is what? 2008 Mazda CX-7. Um, we're gonna drive all these cars. So I think let's actually do that. I'll grab the keys to them and then could talk about them as I'm driving them. Here's how we're gonna do it. So the first car is the Mazda. I'll leave the keys in here, lock it up. And actually, I should have probably grabbed my check engine reader because it does have a code, so we could pull that right away. Let's check the Mazda. So here are our codes, two codes, intake, camshaft, position, timing, over retarded. That's not a good code at all. So, Looks like one is pending and one is confirmed. So this is one code. And uh, yeah, from what I can remember, this is not a good code, guys. So we're gonna start it. We have a nearly full tank of gas. But I don't know if you guys will hear that whining. So actually, while it's warming up a little bit, we'll do a quick walk around. I wanted to turn on the headlights, make sure everything's working. Looks like tires are in good shape. Small scuff right here, which is not a big deal. It's more noticeable on a black car, however. Interior looks pretty darn nice. Uh, dog hair, cat hair, most likely dog hair. Let's see what we got in here. Nothing really fancy. Looks like rear seats fold down. We have all the Spare tire hardware. I mean, pretty clean car. Black on black with tinted windows. Um, what are the miles? I don't remember. 102, so mileage isn't that bad. And as with every car, um, you hope for a winner. And honestly, I went off of their condition report. 
and condition report didn't have any mechanical issues it didn't have any check engine lights or anything so i'm really really bummed out at this i feel like it's very unfair and almost shady business on Mannheim's part seems like employees are half-assing their jobs which is not okay the only thing it showed mechanical for this car is that the battery was in up you guys hear that far that definitely doesn't sound healthy um, the only thing it had was inoperable battery which batteries totally fine you know it got delivered yesterday it didn't need a jump and even now it sat overnight it didn't need a jump but yeah really high pitching sound so this was not a good one we're gonna take a look underneath the hood. I wanna see if there is a transmission dipstick. Our oil is in here because Mazda is a little bit weird with their placements. It would definitely have engine oil and it is very, very dark. Let's see, transmission stuff is not really cheap. Okay, do we have a transmission dipstick? Unfortunately, I can't find one, so maybe, maybe, maybe we'll have to, uh, I'll have to look it up online and see if I could find it. But so far, first one out of the four at the lot is no good. Next up, we have the Nissan. From what I saw yesterday, this one should be good to go with no issues, as far as I know. But let's give it a try. push button start I'll let this one also warm up this one is actually a salvage title and it's a little bit rough which again sucks pictures don't show none of this but this one had no condition report it was sold as is which is fine I can more or less respect that and not be upset at it but yeah outside condition is a little bit rough 120,000 miles. We could pull this off. Looks like we have really nice Michelin tires, which are nearly new. So that's a good sign, at least something positive. And another car with nearly a full tank of gas. Let's see how the maiden voyage will be on this one. Man, window doesn't go up. Let's see if it does from here. Oh, good. So it looks like a button here doesn't work. Oh, I remember this one. It needs brakes. Or maybe the fact that it was sitting for a while and not driven. I guess we'll find out very shortly. So far, I mean, this thing is running like a gem. I was actually getting ready to take it through emissions and then I forgot I don't have my wallet on me. So I gotta turn around, go grab my wallet and then maybe take it in through uh, emissions. I just got off the phone with my detailer. He said I could drop it off in about 40 minutes. So looks like at least one of them is somewhat of a good purchase. I mean, it's not pulling left or right. Seems like it has good power, no funny noises. Um, so I guess uh, second one out of four at the lot is a winner. Check the oil on this one. We have oil and it actually doesn't look to be that bad so it looks like car number two was a decent purchase car number three is a hybrid Civic and this one is in rough shape but I only paid a thousand bucks for it uh, and this one I knew had issues because I saw that it had a check engine light on and boy is it filthy up in here so we're actually gonna check the check engine codes first all right, let's see what we have on the Civic. Battery voltage malfunction. Hybrid battery pack deterioration confirmed. Um, honestly, kind of had a feeling about this one that it could be hybrid related. Um, but what we are going to do is actually drive it. 
because hybrid cars are very very interesting in the sense that if you don't drive them the battery loses charge and then it could throw funny codes such as this I'm not too familiar with uh, hybrid cars but I've had you know a handful of them now so I'm hoping that that's what it's gonna be I'll go on a longer loop around um, I'm gonna let it warm up we'll walk around actually let me pull it out and then because I think that'll be a little bit easier to kind of walk around it there's what this thing looks like seems like it was side swiped or they side swiped it and it's pretty much what we have this side looks more or less pretty good I kind of do like the color looks pretty nice I'm gonna grab my wallet and let's go for a drive the gauge I'll be paying attention to is this one right here that battery so if that starts to charge up then we might be okay it is driving a little little funky uh, not too terrible but I do think I know what the issue is so you guys see those green bars especially when I brake, like right now that should be nearly at the bottom to charge the battery at least that's how it's worked with every single other hybrid card that I've had like see right now I'm pushing brakes it's not charging the battery at all or maybe it's broken because battery is allegedly fully charged now as you guys can see I don't know maybe I'm pulling things out of thin air trying to make myself feel better with these purchases like I would have been okay with this one being bad because I kind of expected this one to be bad. Uh, but the Mazda was definitely not expecting any issues with that car. So, kind of sucks. Now that charge just went full green and then that battery dropped again. So I think we definitely do have an issue on our hands. But again, I'm curious, you know, maybe it's having these issues because it hasn't been driven. So, once I get back into the office, I'm gonna work on all the codes, pull them up, see what the severity is of those codes and kind of make a decision from there. Aside from the weird charging behavior, this car seems like, you know, it ran fine. It didn't pull anywhere, made good power. I'm curious if, you know, just the battery pack is deactivated or I don't know. <sighs> One thing at a time. As I was about to jump out of the car, look at what I noticed. <laughs> this whole seatbelt is gone. This car is definitely starting to look like a uh, throw it back on the auction type of car. And last but not least, we have this Jetta. This is a diesel Jetta, one owner Jetta. I was not expecting any issues with this car, especially this car. And I would say this car has the most major issue out of all the cars that I purchased. As of yesterday, it had absolutely no forward gears. For the year, this car actually scored extremely high on the condition report. It was like 3.5 or something. But again, Mannheim failed to disclose that it has transmission issues. Like, <sighs> really upsetting, guys. Really, really, really upsetting. Like, look, there's a kick into reverse and absolutely nothing for the drive. Nothing. There's a reverse drive I'll pull back give a gas nothing I'm just rolling down the hill first oh there's a little bit reverse though look at that perfect and drive absolutely nothing nearly 4,000 RPMs in a diesel, and it ain't moving. Now they say, flipping cars is fun. Sometimes it is, but. Off 
oftentimes it's very disappointing because the big guy always stomps on the little guy. Literally bit on that Jetta because of the condition report. Because it had no mechanical issues, no check engine lights, nothing disclosed. Really good condition report, 3.5 out of 5, which for a vehicle like that is fantastic. This is another example. I paid top dollar for both of these cars because they had condition reports that didn't disclose any issues. This one I know it had issues, but that's why I paid $1,000 for that. That's cheap. That's cheap. I knew the risk with that one. I didn't pay top dollar for that one. Same thing with this one. I didn't pay a lot of money for this one. I bought it as is. I understand that. But I don't understand why Mannheim sends me two emails. We stand behind our condition reports. Either $150 plus that we missed or $600 collectively, like little nicks, damage, whatever. Transmission is more than $150 for a single item to repair. Well guys, this has been very disappointing to say the least. Um, at this time I have two arbitration cases open with Mannheim for the Mazda and for the Volkswagen. They are pushing back. They don't want to do anything, which I personally think is very unfair. Um, but we'll see. I'm going to wrap up the video here. I guess uh, nice and short. You guys are updated with what's going on in my life at the lot. Um, and I guess maybe in a further video, I'll kind of tell you guys exactly what happened and how this all ends. If I keep the cars, then I guess we'll try to fix them or I have, I have no idea guys. Um, it's very disappointing, but we're going to leave it here. You guys have a wonderful, blessed day. Thank you for watching. I appreciate your time. I'll see you guys in another video.